Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on Cisco IS 1.2. You can find a complete list of our IS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will configure radius authentication on Cisco IS to work with AnyConnect VPN, and we will try to use IS to push down VPN group policies and per user ACLs to VPN user. So why would you want to do this? If you have dealt with IPsec client VPN, you know that you can somewhat restricting users to only connect to their own user VPN group by handing out a certain .pcf file to them. But with AnyConnect VPN, that concept is no longer there. Usually users are either prompted to select a group at login page, just like how we showed on this diagram right here. As a drop down, you can see if you choose to do the group list, or they need to know a specific login URL if you choose to do a group URL method. But nothing would stop a user to find out and choose a different user group so they did not belong to and end up with additional access. So having ICE mapping out users to group policies not only solve the problem with unauthorized access, but also simplify user lock-in process now that they no longer need to have any knowledge of which group they need to choose at the lock-in page. I just want to mention that this video is basically a repeat of another video we have already, and that is SEC0096. ACS 5.4 and Connect VPN Radius Authentication Authorization, but instead of using Cisco ACS, here in this video, we're going to be using Cisco ICE. Now here on our network diagram, we have a Cisco ICE 1.2 on VLAN 32, and on the same VLAN, we have a domain controller and the Certificate Authority server on a Windows 2008 machine, the IPF.40. And here we have a Cisco ASA that we configure for any Connect VPN, and the inside connect to VLAN 10, the IPF.252, and the outside with the VLAN 11, the IPF111.1. And on the outside, we have our test Windows 7 machine that we're going to be using to test our VPN from. As far as the users, we have two users on the Active Directory. The first user is admin1, that's part of the network admin AD group, that's going to be getting a group policy of network admin, as well as the downloadable ACL that's deny ICMP but allow everything else. The second AD user is support1 that's part of the network support AD group and that's going to get a different group policies for network support but this particular user will only be allowed to do ICMP. Now for those of you who still like to use a local user database on ICE, we also going to have a local user called local1 that will be created on ICE. That's going to be part of a local user group or identity group of local admin and that user is going to be part of a network admin group policy just like admin1, so it's also going to get a downloadable ACL of deny ICMP and allow everything else. Okay, so let's start off by walking through some of the existing configuration on the firewall that we have, so you guys can kind of get an idea of what we have right now. So let me bring up the console to the firewall right here. Just to show, show run username, so currently we have a username a local to the firewall for Cisco with the password Cisco. And then we have our IP local pool for our IP address of the VPN user. To show run access list, we have a split tunnel access list on our VPN that allows a connection to anything that's 1.16/16. And we have our web VPN or any connect VPN enable with a image for our Windows. And currently we have a tunnel group list enable. And here we have a list of our tunnel group that we're going to use initially. The first one is the network admin, and we also have the second group, which is the network support. And that's, you can see here, it maps to the corresponding group policy as well. Okay, and each of these has a group alias for our group list. And then if you look under our group policy, we have our network support that will be tunneling everything. And we also have a network admin group policies that has a split tunnel with the ACL that we just saw. And both of these groups also has the AnyConnect client enable as the default type of uh, web VPN. Okay, so next let's try to do a quick test from our test PC out here with what we have configured already. So let me bring up a web browser and the IP or the outside IP of the firewall is 1111. Now you can see here since we are doing a group list, you see we have or the user has an option to pick either one of the group and just use a Cisco Cisco. First we're going to try a network admin accept certificate and since we already have a any connect client kind of install although you can initiate the connection from the web login we can see it, it ends up connecting or established a vpn on the any connect mobility or secure mobility client itself and now currently we are connected so if you're trying to ping let's say our windows 2008 which is 32.40 let's see it doesn't look less pingable so let's see what ip that we got is 162.16.11 let's make sure our switch 
as a route to that. Okay, and we do. Let's look at our route detail. You can see we got our split tunnel. There you go. Maybe we just didn't wait long enough. There you go. Actually, it, it went through in the last ping, so we know that's good. Okay, so ping the switch. So that's for the network admin group policy. Next is trying to this time initiate the connection from the AnyConnect client itself instead of the web and connect. And one thing I haven't really shown you is that we also have the client profile configured as part of the secure mobility configuration on the SDM. As you can see here, even when you initiate the connection from the client itself, you still get that drop down option. So this time we're going to try to connect to network support using the exact same user account, Cisco. And then time in password, Cisco. As you can see, the same user, Cisco, currently can access both, whether it's network admin or network support VPN group. Okay, so let's just verify our connectivity and let's try to ping one more time. And there you go. And you can see that the ping is going through. So we are good with uh, both of the group policies that we have. Okay, next, let's take a look at our AD users that we're going to be dealing with on our Active Directory user and computer right here. We have our first AD user admin one. There's a member of network admin user group, as well as a support one that's part of a network support user group. Okay, now for our third user, that's going to be local to ICE. Let's uh, see if we have that user already. If we don't, let's go ahead and create one. So under administration, and this is our ICE 1.2 web interface. Under the user, you can see we currently have no user. So before we go ahead and create the user, we first want to create a identity group for the user. So let's go ahead and add. For the name, we're going to call it local space admins or local admin. We'll click submit just like how we have it right here on the diagram and then once we have the identity group we can create the user so under users click add for the name we say it's going to be local one the password we're going to do cisco one two three with uppercase c the first c for cisco and then we're going to assign the user to the group we just created called local admin and then click submit since we're going to be utilizing the Active Directory user group, we need to make sure that first of all, we still have a good connectivity to our AD. So under external identity store or sources, click under Active Directory. And we currently connected, or ICE is currently connected to AD. And let's verify under group. And we currently has no user group, so we need to add those at least for our network admin and network support. So we're going to retrieve the groups and then scroll down and try to find right here with network admin and network support. We'll click OK. Now it's added. It. It's going to save the configuration. OK, next we need to add our VPN firewall. So ICE knows when the radius request comes in, it can process it. So under the administration, again, similar to the user, we're going to first have to create a network device group so we can distinguish the request that comes in and know when it comes in from our VPN firewall. Now under the all device types, we're going to click add and then we'll call it VPN firewall. Click submit. Then we're going to jump over to network devices and then add a new network device. And here we'll call it LM firewall one with the IP address that will be the Insight interface IP, which is 172.16.10.252. So 10.252 will leave the location default and then for the device type it will be VPN firewall. For authentication string or radius key or secret we'll use just Cisco. To show you that's just a simple Cisco. We're not going to do SNMP settings so we're going to click submit. Okay and going back to our diagram here we said two types of downloadable ACL that will be pushing down to the user is one is for deny ICMP and the other one is for ICMP only. So now we're going to create a policy elements or downloadable ACL for that. So that would be under policy element results and under authorization, downloadable ACLs, we'll click add. And the first one, let's do the no ICMP or block all the ICMP. It's, let's give it a name VPN-no-ICMP. And for the DACL, it will be deny ICMP any any and then permit. IP any any. Make sure you click the check the syntax. As long as the syntax is valid, we'll click submit. And then we'll create one more for ICMP only. And that would be VPN dash ICMP dash only. The ACL will be permit ICMP 
any any okay check and then submit now we're going to have to create the authorization profile that's going to utilize the downloadable ACLs and there will be two separate authorization profiles that we need to create for the two separate access for the VPN and the first one is going to be for the network admin so we'll call it VPN dash network dash admin for DACL will be VPN no ICMP as we specify right here with deny ICMP for network admin and then we need to add a radius attribute that will allow the VPN firewall to place the particular VPN user to the correct group policy that we want and that is a class attribute OU you might have heard of this particular attribute already to do that here we go under the advanced attribute settings and since it's going to be radius attribute we have to choose radius and now we're going to look for class right here type 25 and then for the value will be OU equal network admin and this particular value right here has to match exactly the name of your group policies so if you go back to the firewall right here we have a group policy name network underscore admin all uppercase okay so submit then we'll have to create one more for the VPN network support so VPN dash network dash support DACL maps to ICMP only and then for the radius class OU equal this time it's going to have to be network support so let me copy that paste and then submit all right now that we have our result or authorization profiles we can go ahead and configure our policies so currently we have a since if you look at the menu we have authentication authorization that means we haven't really enabled policy set so let's go ahead and do that under the system setting and policy set and click enable i mean you don't have to do this but with the ice 1.2 you have that particular support for policy set obviously if you're doing ice 1.1 .1 or the priority 1.2 then you wouldn't have that option okay so with the password let's lock back in it's just the policy set may it's looks very similar to the acs version 5 where you have the service selection rules and all that so okay so under policy now we click on policy set and we're gonna have to create a policy set that will match a radius request coming from a vpn device so here we'll click edit we're just going to call it a vpn for the name and for the condition we need to match the radius request and the first condition that we can do so let's do advanced condition and we can match that based on the device type that we specify earlier for our firewall and that would be under the device device type and we said we have a VPN firewall device and to make sure that the radius request coming is for the VPN we can also add another attribute value for the radius and it's something that I've already known in advance that the radius request coming in for the VPN it's going to have a attribute called NAS port type and that will be equal to virtual for VPN okay so if those conditions are met we're just going to continue down through this policy beginning uh, starting with the authentication policy since we're just going to be using the same identity uh, source for all type of requests there's no need to create a separate rule for that it's just going to use the default rule and then for identity source we're going to use the one that we already created the sequence that's going to look at uh, using the cert and then ad and then local and then guess okay so it's just it's basically a lazy way of uh, specifying your identity source so it's going to map or trying to match or look up users in those sequence okay which is good enough for our testing here okay we'll leave the default allow protocol to be default network access so that's for the authentication next for the authorization we're going to have to create two rules for uh, to uh, group policies or v for VPN so let's create a new rule and call that VPN dash network dash admin okay as far as our condition it's going to be very simple which is since we said it's going to be based on the AD group membership so for our condition we'll go advanced option select attribute under AD one 
here's the option for external groups and we selected two groups earlier under the external identity source for the Active Directory and here we have the network admin. Okay, so if you're part of the network admin on AD, you'll be matching this particular rule. And once that happens, we want to return a authorization profile of VPN network admin. Okay, so let's duplicate below. Instead of network admin, it's going to become a network support. And the external AD group this time is going to be network support. Make sure it's the correct one network support and we're going to change the authorization profile to VPN network support. Okay, now we're going to add one more rule for our third user, which is a local user that's part of a local admin identity group. So this time let's add a new rule below and we're going to call that VPN dash local dash admin and then to match based on a user identity group, you go under here and then choose your identity group, which is local admin. And then we said that we're gonna give them the VPN network admin access. Okay, and then let's make sure that we don't have the catch all permit. Instead, we deny by default. So here, change to deny access, done, and click submit.